Hi, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at JavaFX property bindings. I'm going to cover the following topics. What is a property binding? We'll find out about the two different types of property bindings. And finally, how to create a property binding. So enough talk, let's start coding. JavaFX property binding allows you to synchronize the value of two properties so that whenever the value of one property changes, the value of the other property updates automatically. JavaFX supports two different types of property bindings. The first is unidirectional binding. And as you'd expect, with unidirectional binding, the binding works in just one direction. The second type is bidirectional binding. With bidirectional binding, the values of two properties are synchronized so that if either of them changes, the other is automatically updated and changed as well. So let's look at how we actually create a property binding. For this demonstration, we're going to look at the unidirectional property binding in JavaFX. To demonstrate unidirectional property binding, I'm using the interface that uh, we developed in our grid pane demo. I've created a new JavaFX project called Binding Demo, and in it I have already added the grid pane user interface. So I'm just going to run that at this point so you can see what it looks like. And in this user interface we have two labels, first name, last name. We have two text fields for the first name and last name, and we have two buttons, a save and a cancel. I'm going to focus on the save button in this user interface. The save button should only be enabled once we have entered something into both the first name and the last name fields. Semantically speaking, you need a first name and a last name in order to have a full name. And it really makes no sense to be able to click on the save button before the user has entered something into both of these text fields. What we're trying to accomplish with this unidirectional binding is to have the save button disabled until the user has entered something into both the first name and the last name fields. So we're going to be using the disable property of the button class. So we'll say save button, or I think we've called it button save. So button save dot disable property. And now we're going to use a method called bind. And as an argument to that bind method, we're going to provide another property. Now the property that we're going to use is the is empty property of the text field class. So we're going to say text first name dot text property dot is empty. And this should be the disable property. And at this point, what we've done is we've said the state of the button's disabled property is bound to whether or not the first name text field is empty. If it is empty, then the save button will be disabled. If it is not empty, then the save button will be enabled. So let's run it at this point and see how that works. So currently, nothing in the first name text field, and the save button, as you can see, is disabled. Once I enter something into the first name text field, the button becomes enabled. So that's the first step in tying the values in our text fields to the state, either enabled or disabled, of our save button. All that remains at this point now is to add in the same sort of logic for the last name. So we want the values of both text fields to figure into the enabled or disabled state of the save button. There is another method, which is OR, and that OR takes an observable value, and the observable value we're going to use is the isEmpty property of the last name text field. So we will say text last name dot text property dot 
is empty. So now the enabled or disabled state of our button depends on whether or not there are values in both of our text fields. Let's run it at this point and you can see how that behaves. Button disabled at the start. When I type into the first name text field, the button is no longer enabled. But as soon as I type something into the last name field, you should see that the save button becomes enabled. And there it is, the save button is now enabled. In this video tutorial, we learned about the JavaFX unidirectional property binding. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more JavaFX videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.